I am the Build, I am Build Creates Marketing Director, uh, and I'm going to give you a little bit of history. Um, I was just in a panel where people were talking about how they got into tech. Uh, I was a music major, that's useful, uh, and music and theater, and uh, I've been in sales for, I got into sales, basically because theater teaches how to lie, and sales and marketing is pretty much what that job is. <laughs> it's the only one that actually pays bills. So, um, I, got, I, was work, I worked in telecommunications, so I, I sold like phone systems and big uh, fiber optic networks around the state, and I got really bored, and I decided to go into websites. Um, it's not as boring. Uh, and I, I was originally at a, a custom design, custom development, one of those guys. Um, we talked really bad about WordPress for a long time. Um, we parted ways. Build Carry Studios was looking for someone to sell websites, uh, and it turns out that I'm the only person that actually had that as a job. So they hired me. Um, and when I started, my job was I was supposed to be cold calling nonprofits to sell website packages to them. Um, that doesn't work, so that will not be one of the things that's on these slides. <laughs> uh, so when I started, they were a project only. They, they literally did everything in projects. They went project to project to project. And they did about 300,000. Those aren't real numbers, 3.7. Um, they, it's actually pretty close. About, they did about $300,000 in sales every year. Um, from the steps that we took from the time I walked in, um, we have doubled. And we are planning on doubling again uh, this year. To we're, our, our goals this year are to uh, breach a million dollars in sales, and the ways we did it are going to be explained here. How many of you are actually agencies? Raise your hands, please. <laughs> uh, I will drop four-letter words if you're offended. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's just how I talk. How many of you are not agencies and businesses and thinking this is going to teach you how to do your business better? And you can be a, if you're a single, if you're working uh, as, a, as a solo entrepreneur, you're a freelancer, this will help you too. But if you're like, I work for CompuWare, um, please leave. Because we're going to talk about things that you don't want to know about. <laughs> so the first thing that we had to do, and this just sounds simple, was we had to know who we were. Uh, when we, we had to know, are we a development agency that is a designer? Are we a designing agency that's development? Are we marketing? What, what the hell are we? And also, what is the language that we wanted to use? This is, it seems simple. We should go, oh, we know who we are. We know what the kind of people that work here. It's actually taken us two years. We've gone through several iterations of our language. When we first started, when I first came on, I said, okay, well, we need to create all this content. We need to do all these things. This is how we're going to talk about it. We're going to use all the buzzwords. And it was, it was a terrible flop internally. We hated it. That's just not us. We're the tough love agency. We're going to tell you how it is. We're going to, you know, we're not, we're not there to be your friend. We're there to make you money. Um, and so uh, we had to learn what, who we were and we had to create content around the, that language. And the other thing that we had to find was our thresholds. Remember I said I walked into that, that job and I was supposed to be selling uh, website packages. And I'm gonna say a number, and I know to a lot of people that's gonna seem like, wow, that's a lot of money, why didn't, nobody's gonna buy that. It's $10,000 to buy a website. Uh, turns out nobody wanted to buy those. Um, not because $10,000 is a lot of money, it's because it wasn't right. That wasn't who we were. Uh, the companies, the organizations that we were working with, they weren't at that threshold. But the companies that we needed to work with were, they weren't interested in packages. We had to learn who we were and what our thresholds were. So no, we don't sell ten thousand dollar websites. Never going to come here. It's generally about twenty five grand. Um, and it, you know, it's funny. You're going to find out. Any of you can find out how much a website is at our website. You can come to us. You ask the question. We're going to give you that answer. The other threshold that we had to figure out was what is our top tier. Um, I'll give you a little story. When I came on to Build Create, I had about 90 days to make this whole process work. The first 60 days I was doing that cold calling thing, 
you know, I was also writing content and doing the things. And I said, hey guys, you know, this thing that I do for you guys, you know, people will pay us to do this. This inbound marketing thing that you, you know, we're getting leads and things of that nature. People will actually pay us to do this, and they'll pay us a fair amount. And though, and and Eric, our owner, um, he was like, okay, we'll sign up for this specific software. You got 30 days. If it doesn't work, we're gonna cut ties. We're we're done. You can go back to being a freelancer. Day 20, we signed a very large contract with a very large statewide company. Uh, we had to learn that top threshold. They were not a good fit. Uh, I couldn't control them. I couldn't manage them. They were too big. There was so you have to know where your balance is. Now if they came to us today. We've got more employees. We can do the thing. It would probably be a better fit. But that wasn't our threshold at the time. And we had to learn very quickly how to say no. And I'm going to make saying no very easy by the end of this. The second thing that we had to do was find a recurring revenue source. This doesn't have to be a huge thing. You don't have to go in and be like, we're going to charge $10,000 a month to do marketing, and blah, 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 blah. No. Um, you can, how, how many of you use an outside hosting company? Please tell me you don't host in your house. <laughs> right? So everyone uses an outside hosting company. How many of you are charging your clients to host their website? A monthly recurring fee of some kind. Do you have maintenance built into that? Yeah. If you don't have maintenance, when I walked in, they said, no, well, I'm like, well, how do you guys do hosting? And they're like, well, we just, we're like, we'll help them sign up for it, we'll help them get all the stuff set up on, you know, Liquid Web or whatever, you know, on the servers that we, the server environment we want to work in, but we don't want to charge them, we don't want anything to do with hosting. Well, there's a lot of great partners that are downstairs that can create a, a structure for you to make money off of the hosting and off of the maintenance. Maintenance doesn't take that long. If you built the website well, it's not going to take that much. But you can charge people, and now you have a monthly, you have a, uh, just a small revenue stream that you can grow on. Because what I'm going to try to work everyone through is you, you can't scale your company if you don't have a scalable amount of money coming in every month. Um, if you're going from project to project, you may have a banger first quarter. You're like, oh my god, I gotta hire two, new, gotta hire two developers. I gotta do all this stuff. That the next quarter it takes a dip, and that was literally the, the ebb and flow that that our or, uh, our company had every single year was they did this all year long, and I'm like, and and they had great years. They had big time years, but they didn't have. Monthly recurring revenues allow us to, to make an upward trajectory. Less than 10% of our monthly revenues in 2015 were coming for month. Our 10% of our revenues every month were monthly revenues. By 2017, it's about it was about half, and that's kind of the threshold that we want to keep it. We want to keep it about half of our of the money that's coming in is coming from existing client bases. And the thing that it did for our owner is he gets to sleep now. Um, he gets to rest. He knows his bills are paid, his you know rent is paid, the lights are on, all of his employees are, are taken care of. He doesn't have to worry about payroll. These things are done. They're not, and, and, and they don't, they're not going anywhere. Uh, those, those people are locked into agreements, they're locked into contracts, so that we can scale. And to kind of give you an example, we, when I started, we had about one and a half full-time employees, maybe two full-time employees, and a couple of contractors. We have we just signed a new lease to move out of town because we can't find space big enough because we have six, seven full-time employees that we're going on, and we're hiring. By the way, if anyone's in marketing, you can come see me afterward. Uh, we're looking for another marketer. Uh, I need another me so I can take a vacation. <laughs> so the steps. Uh, to doing it or to create content, to write. If you don't like writing, I'm sorry, this is not a good uh, talk for you. You need to write. We create, and when we do an inbound campaign, we generally tell people, you should be creating at least two to three pieces of content every single day. Or I'm sorry, not every single day, every single week. <laughs> we, uh, we do about one piece of content to two pieces of content every single day, internally. Um, we literally are, there's somebody writing every single day. 
And yes, it's good for SEO, but the second thing that is that we can use it for, because we're strategic on how we write, is we can reuse that content to nurture our leads, to work them down the sales funnel, to have uh, email trickle campaigns, and I'm sure some of you in this room get all the time. Um, we get to use that, that content to continue to nurture leads. And they may be bad leads, but we don't have to worry about it because the automation's taking care of it. Um, and we get to be that change that we seek. We want to tell people, hey, you, uh, you, know, you should be doing this, you should be paying us to do this, but we have to be the first one to do it. We have to show people that, that, um, that this is what you should be doing, this is how it works. And we have the case studies, including ourselves, that say, yeah, this works because traffic went up 40%. And our leads went from like about two to four contact forms a month to we get about six leads a week. Um, now, not all of them are qualified. And in the next step side, we're going to figure out how we get, how do we filter those people out. Those leads are coming from what are called gated content. So we have all that content. You take the best of it and you put it behind a paywall. And that paywall is give me your who you are. Tell me who you are. Um, and we will sell you all the data you want to know. And can anyone tell me what the first question anyone ever asks you when they want to talk about building a website? Anybody? How much does it cost? How many of you are afraid to tell someone how much a website costs? <laughs> Why? Do you know how much your competitors charge for a website? So they know how much you charge, right? So who cares? And if they're below the threshold, they you tell them, hey, this website costs this much, and they're below the threshold, you don't have to deal with them. You can have email marketing do the thing, because if they're really passionate about what they want, and they're like, man, I can only afford five, five thousand, or two thousand, or a thousand dollars, but it costs for you a thousand, you know, twice that. If they really want to work with you, if they really want to, they'll find the money. If they're pa passionate about their business, and this is serious for them, they're gonna find the money. So if you continue to nurture them through automations, you know, workflows, things of that nature, you personally as the business owner don't have to do jack. Just let it go, and if they're happy, if they want what you have, they're gonna come back. Which is what we're talking about, remarketing to them. And there's two ways to remarket, and at least for me anyway. One is the email marketing that I'm talking about. The second thing is uh, if any of you are not using Google, uh, AdWords remarketing for your business, you should do that now. And I'm gonna let you in on a secret. It's super damn cheap, really cheap. Um, we set a budget of about $2 a day and we never max out our budget. Our AdWords cost can be a couple thousand dollars a month for search ads. Our remarketing ads cost us virtually nothing. Because the whole point is that it's a brand, it's remarketing, it's a brand uh, it reinforcer, if you will. It, every time you go to another website, you see that build trade ad, you, and I get people all the time that complain to me, dude, you please lay off, I can't go to a website without seeing your stupid green ads. No, no, that means I win. <laughs> you see my brand. <laughs> Tough. Um, and, you use all of this, this information and you can, can nurture those leads. Because like I said, if they really, really, really want what you've got, they're gonna find a way to get the money to do it. Um, and we've already talked about automation, and I'm gonna dig into that a little bit deeper down the road. Oh, like right now. <laughs> it's the tools that make you money. Um, WordPress is fantastic. It's, for the most part, free. Um, but find some tools that are going to make you money. Find a good hosting partner. That's that first step. Find that re first residual uh, you know, amount of money that you can help that he, okay, so it sounds bad, it's like, oh, it's 100 bucks a month, what's that? You build 12 websites in a, in a year. Uh, that's $1,200 that's recurring. You do that the next year, it's $2,400 a month. This is recurring revenue that you can use to pay for a, a part-time developer to do your quarterly maintenance. And you're still making money, it's profit. And profit is good. Um, and then find the good marketing tools. Because I don't know, I kind of skipped over the point. By the way, SEO, PPC, inbound marketing, 
This is not that hard. I literally taught myself my job by watching YouTube videos. That's it. Took a little while, spent a lot of time doing it. This isn't rocket science. If you can do, build and develop a website, you can do SEO. It's just not that hard. Um, and the beautiful part about WordPress is that it gives you so many great tools already baked, kind of baked in. Um, Yoast being one of them, um, and not plugging because they're a sponsor, but seriously plugging them because they're a sponsor. <laughs> they're, it's, for on-page SEO, it's super, it's free, and you get to learn some of those, you get to at least know the characters that you should, okay, where are my keywords, what are, you, it's, they give it to you. If you come from the custom side like I do, they don't have those tools. You just gotta know the information, and that's where I think a lot of the people got this idea that search engine optimization is rocket science. Now, I'm gonna tell every client, I'm glad there's no businesses in here, that it really is rocket science, and we really are worth that much money in every month to do this. But it's not. And any, if you are a single, I just do this by myself, I built websites for small businesses. If, if, you, can, if you can build that website, you can optimize it and help them in market. And what are some of the tools that we use? Number one is, uh, uh, the reason I'm going to say Inspectlet's a great tool is it makes you money. And again, hopefully there's no businesses in here. They have a model that allows us to charge more than what we pay for it. So for a small business who's just getting started, you take Inspectlet, it gives you about five, I think it's 10 licenses, and it's $79 a month. This is, this was, look up this web, it is a, it screen captures every visitor. So you get to see how people are interacting with your website. It does heat mapping. Does click mapping? These are these are not only powerful tools for your user experience and your marketing elements. They're also super cool tools to take into a sales meeting and go look at the cool we do. How many of you? How many of the other people that are giving proposals give you all this information and data? Um, and so at seventy nine bucks, we charge our clients seventy nine dollars a piece. You get through five, ten of them, you're making free money off of everybody else. That profit is necessary because seven hundred and ninety dollars a month or whatever is you know part of a, uh, of a payroll for another content writer. Now we can scale. We can take on more clients. We can make more money. The next is Moz. This doesn't this doesn't make you money in that you can charge anybody for this. Moz SEM rush on these SEO tools, but they're going to help you be really efficient on correcting your websites and making them as fit as optimized for, for search engines as humanly possible. They're constantly broke. Um, checking your website data, they're, they're doing all the things, they're giving you all these insights. Um, and the last one is SharpSprint. Now this is actually the tool that kind of took us to the next level. I, this is the thing that I had 30 days to prove that this works, and we're, I'm here talking to you now, so obviously it did. Um, and it's an agency, I don't know, if, how many of you are familiar with HubSpot? Okay. It's a big buzzword, they charge a ton of money. SharpSpring is a competitor to HubSpot, and what its basis is, is that we are for agencies. Our pricing model is for agencies. We want to help agencies grow. That is pretty much the same functionality as Marketo, Pardot, HubSpot, but about a tenth of the cost. And they sell you, you charge what you want, we don't care. Um, so you can, um, and anyone who wants a demo of this, if you're interested in something like this, you come see me afterward, and I'll get you a demo from SharpSpring, um, and you know I'll give the referral and send it off to one of our to our account reps, and they'll give you a demo of the software, I'll help you understand the pricing model. Um, I won't really go in really go into that, um, but it's an incredibly aggressive pricing model to help agencies because once you, for us. Once we've locked our clients into, we give them so much data. They know who visits, they know when they visit, they know every page they visit, they know all this information, and it's got marketing automation tools, email tools, and um, one of the more important things for business owners is where do my marketing dollars get spent? Marketing attribution. And this tool gave us marketing attribution. It says, you know, um, are you, any of you familiar with John Wonka? He was a, um, he was like a, magnate in uh, retail in the turn of the century. He said, half my advertising dollars are wasted. The problem is I don't know which half. What some of these tools that are going to help you as a business and then also help you grow as a business because you can resell this to other people 
is that you get to tell them this is where your marketing dollars work. And oh, by the way, if they're all coming from organic leads, guess who's good at work? Look at what we did for you. You should stay working with us and pay us more money. So, to kind of wrap things up. Um, in conclusion, um, if you don't know who you are, then how can your customers ever know who you are? And how are you going to know? How are they going to know that they're a good fit for you and you for them? Um, and if you're living project to project, how can you grow safely? And it's, it's really hard. Anyone ask anybody who's been doing this for you know six, eight, ten years? Growing organically is very, very difficult uh, without some sort of safety mechanism in the terms of monthly recurring revenues. Um, and if I can't stress this enough, create content, create content. Um, it's got so much value. Um, and then answer the questions that you have and filter out those that aren't qualified. Not everybody's a good fit for Build Great Studios. We know it. Um, of those six, one, maybe a week, is qualified enough to even get to the proposal level. We filter out five of our leads. It's not a good fit, sorry. They, they take the pricing, they often filter themselves out. But then there are some that will come back six months later, and we know every page they visit and every time they visit, um, that they became a better, they became the right fit. And because we, we nurtured them, we remarketed to them, we did all those things, and then when they found the money, they were like, oh, this is a good fit now. And then find the tools that don't cost, that aren't costing you money. They, you may pay. SharpSpring isn't free. None of the inspectors not free. None of these tools are free. Um, but they make you money. It's an investment, not a, an expenditure. And take a look at the tools. Um, they're, uh, yeah. Take a look at the tools that you have and make sure that they're making you money. So, and that is, yeah, that's how we, that's how we grew and are continuing to grow. Um, and hopefully for the remainder of, of all time, we just keep getting bigger. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I was wondering uh, how your company uh, markets yourselves uh, like you, you have your marketing side and you have your, yep. your development side. Absolutely. Do you charge the client a package design oh, yeah. separately? Mm -hmm. it's all package. Yep. Alright, so the question was, we have a development side, we have a marketing side. Do we charge uh, like a, 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 a one massive fee? And the answer is yes. Do we sometimes split them out? The answer is yes. We're going to do the thing that's going to fit the client the best. Um, a lot of clients are like, no, I've got, I've got this X budget to get my website done, and I'm, I've got this in my marketing budget on a monthly recurring basis, and we want the two separate. And then there's some that go, yeah, roll it all into one. It's you know X amount of dollars, you know fifteen thousand dollars a month or whatever. Roll it all into one, and we've got an annual contract to get that website done. And one little question: What's the difference between um, Spectral and Google Analytics? Oh, there's a big difference. Google Analytics um, tells you that people visited, where they came from, how long they were there, and where did they go. And Speckle says, let's watch a video of that person doing that activity. Uh, yeah. And when we, so with the combination of Sharp Spring and Inspectlet, we can take your email address, your IP address, tie them together, go to Inspectlet and watch Declan. Walk, go through our website and go page to page to page to page. And just be totally creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it's really creepy. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, if you have a site and you're looking at your traffic, is there any tool that says, like, on some days I might spike, I might spike and, and I'm wondering where the heck is this traffic coming from? Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. Yeah. Is there a way that you can, you know, kind of figure out? What caused that spike? If, not, if you don't have a well, do you have Google Analytics on the website? Huh? Do you have Google Analytics on the website? I got Google Analytics. Yes. It should tell you where that spike came from. Okay. You should be able to if you go into Google Analytics and you say uh, you see the spike and you go through the channels and you narrow it down. Say it's you know Tuesday we got this spike of an extra hundred visitors than we normally have. 
and then you narrow it down to Tuesday in Google Analytics, and you say, it will break down where that traffic came from, uh-huh. and you can go, oh, it all came from uh, you know, Facebook. How far, how far back can you go in time? In, in the, from the day you set up Google Analytics, it's tracking that data. It doesn't get rid of it. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, did you find when you had like sort of we saw in posting that you get a uh, bit burden for like email support and other back-end? Oh hell no, email's terrible. So you, you do it. If you want if someone wants email support, it, it's 150 bucks an hour and we can help you as much as we can. Yeah. Um, but generally we just direct them over to whoever the email hosting company is. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, as soon as you say it's 150 bucks an hour for us to troubleshoot this for you, they generally will go get the free support from their email host. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess at, at what point um, did, like, did you start subcon- um, subcontracting and um, you know just hire them and, and employees? And uh, do you still sub- do any subcontracting? Um, okay, so that's a, it depends on which side. Um, the development side. Um, they don't, we don't generally subcontract. We'll do like a subcontract to hire kind of thing. You got 90 days and if you're not an idiot, we'll hire you. Also, can you pass a drug test? If you tell us yes, we're definitely not gonna hire you. Um, <laughs> we don't hire losers. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's our hiring process, literally. <laughs> um, but no, um, we don't generally subcontract a whole lot in terms of development. Most of our subcontractors come out of they're writers. Uh, we do subcontract some writing uh, just because of the amount that we write. When you've got you know dozens of clients and websites and stuff that they got to write for, we, we li- three of us literally can't handle it. Um, and then, but if you're a marketer, if you, if you can write, you can give me your resume. It's fine. <laughs> I, oh, I told you we're really looking for another marketer. That was my next question about writing. So when you uh, you, like you said write 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 on a slide. So when you do all this writing, is it is it around who you are, or what you guys have done determine who you are, and then, um, yeah. and then um, when it comes to these content writers, uh, are because you probably have a few of them. Um, on the back of the class, are the, move forward. Are the different yeah. writers? Do they make like do they bring different voices that can oh, take away from are. the <laughs> the core of who you are? Yeah. And do you suggest that um, we hire writers, or that we write ourselves? It depends. That depends. Should you hire someone versus internal? I think that uh, external writers do a great job of explaining it to people who don't know, like your customer base. Your customers, uh, like our, our um, we have people who write for us that they don't know anything about IT services. But you know what? A lot of sort of the visitors that come to the website, so it's a really good fit. You know, if you have just IT people talking about it, they talk in a bunch of jargon that. What the hell knows what that means? So, you're asking about write, write, write. So there, this is, I suck at art. I'm not a designer. Um, this is a funnel. This is our top of the funnel, middle of the funnel. I also have the handwriting of someone with cerebral palsy. And that's the bottom of the funnel. I hope I didn't really offend anyone with that one. I am such an asshole. Um, you take all, and then you have your personas. This is person one, person two, person three. Each of them have different questions based on who they are and where they are in the sales funnel, sales marketing funnel. And you ask your you ask your client, what are the questions? Or if you are writing for yourself, what are the questions that everyone's asking? If they're a marketing person, because there's your web design agency, who's coming to you? Business owners, marketing people. Uh, occasionally the IT guy who got stuff doing this job. And they all have different questions based on who they are. They all have different questions based on where they are in their entire process. When they're at the top of the funnel, that's why we have a pricing guide. You're just starting to glaze through all this jazz. You, the first thing you're like, all right, well I've got, t- I got five grand from my business or 10 grand from the, the owner to build a website. I gotta come in here, I gotta find out who's gonna, who's gonna I'm going to chop off the people that I can't afford. And I'm just going, how much does a website cost? And I go to a web, bunch of web designers and go, oh, okay, these are the prices. We have another thing that's called a marketing or a website buying guide. And that's in the middle of the funnel. That goes, what's your process like? Because that's usually the next question someone says, 
well, well, what is this all? What happens? And then we have your bottom of funnel contact, which is they filled out a contact form. They actually said, okay, you, I can afford you. Your process is clean and clear. I know what I'm going to be going through. All right, I'm ready to talk to you. And here's my budget. By the way, always ask your budget. If you don't have that on your on your uh, um, you know your contact form, add it. Add a drop down. Give them some ranges. Ask them what their budget is. Because people who tell you that they don't have a budget determined already, it's going to be the longest damn process of your life. It's going to be so long because they have to figure out where they're going to find the money once they finally find out how much it costs to do this. So ask them their budget. And the ones that say that it's undetermined, you can kind of like. Yeah, we're going to skip around with you because I'm not really sure you're serious. Someone who's ready to buy knows how much money they can spend. You don't go into car. You don't go into Nike. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, you don't go buy a car unless you know how much money you've got. So of course, at the bottom of the funnel, ask how much money it costs. And then the other content that you're writing is going to be nurturing those leads in those different areas of the funnel. If they came in from the top of the funnel, those other questions. That, you, that, that, that are asked along that process, answer those. Write blogs about them, and then remarket that back. Yes, ma'am? How do you, um, do web development firms handle, like, not necessarily, oh, sorry. <laughs> Mark, you're first. It's How fine. do you handle, uh, like, potential competitive conflict? So you mentioned, like, IT services. Would you take another IT services company in the same space? Would Hell you, no. Okay, so it's... No, 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 you could, I mean, we're loyal to those people. Okay. We get we get people who ask us to do because they see in our portfolio that you do this, so they go, oh, now if they're if we don't have an ongoing project, that's one thing. But if you're if you're you bought a website yeah, and then you're marketing, it. yeah, because the marketing for twice three times as much as the, the website is. We build a website for you know we'll call it twenty grand. By the time they're three years into their marketing, they spend a hundred thousand dollars. Marketing's way more valuable. I don't want to ever miss that away. No. Related to just about the email, when you're recommending hosting companies for people, uh -huh. are those hosting companies also handling the email, or are you recommending other solutions for email, or like how do you handle that? I personally don't care, um, <laughs> but no, I think we usually. Uh, that's ask Ian. Uh, I think we usually say go use Google Apps or something like that. Okay. Basically, because it's got the it's got the cleanest integration with some of the softwares that we use uh, for tracking your email, basically, and it's super easy to put together. And it's cheap and it's Google. I always panic when somebody wants to they're, they're willing to move a website to the hosting that I recommend because they're on something cheap and crappy, but then they have like integrated email. I'm like, never mind, I'm not touching that because yeah, no, email. I mean Google yeah. Apps or or even Office 365 are so easy to set up. It's like yeah. Well, I don't know why you would want to stick with that webmail client, but I don't know. That's free. That's what they want to stick with. And Gmail's five bucks a user. I mean, yeah, if you don't have five dollars to invest in a proper email sent, you know, service, then you're probably not a good fit for to rebuild your website, right? I don't know. Anyway, anybody else? Yes. Um, well, do you have any type of uh, warranty or uh, guarantee? In, in which case? In terms of marketing? Well, you, you develop a form, whatever, if you have a warranty or, 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 or guarantee. If they're not happy, hey, you get refunded, blah, blah, blah. Um, I will say from the website side, I don't really have a warranty. We have a, you know, 90 days, we'll fix whatever is broken. We'll, we'll make, re you know, revisions and things of that nature. You're signing off on the, the website launch. I mean, it's not going to, they're not going to, break in 90 days. Um, in terms of marketing, here's my, my warranty. Uh, you give me 12 months, if, I, if this costs you more than it, than, it, than it made you, you don't have to do this again. And if you, because uh, it takes a good 12 months to really see a good return on investment. Someone's like, well, I'll do 90 days. I'll be like, eh, it's not going to work. That's not how this works. That's, you know, it doesn't work that way. It's not, you know, Let's optimize the page, and all of a sudden you're the first page, you're the first one to show up on Google. So I say, if you give me 12 months and if this didn't make you money, don't sign up again. I've never had someone not sign up. So, uh, but it's it's yeah. If you're willing to, you know, we can show you that this works for everybody else. That's what case studies are for. Um, 
this has worked for other people. So yeah, just 12 month contract. There's your there's your warranty. Okay. Yeah. So do you target like uh, in Arbor or Michigan or? I'll target anybody that's got an open checkbook that check clears. Um, no, we target Ann Arbor and Michigan. Uh, Michigan, Michigan web design, you know, okay. marketing, things like that. Those are the, if you're asking what keywords do we target, um, I no. can't tell you that. No, no, no. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm not competitor. Uh, 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 no, it's fine. Um, and honestly, if you use SEMrush, you can find out what keywords I'm targeting because yes. it tracks all that information already. Um, I, know, well, I know what all my competitors are. are so your customers are from Michigan or? I'm Michigan primarily. Primarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we work primarily, I mean, most of our work comes from the Ann Arbor, Detroit area. Um, but, you know, we certainly have clients in other parts of the state. Yeah. Anything else? All right, cool. That was fun. Thank you.